Well, I want to continue today, and I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go, so、uh, you may have to fasten your seatbelts some. We do have the notes, remember,、uh, out at the table, so I encourage you to、uh, pick them up, and, and、uh, even those that are online, if they, if they get back in, sometime we'll have all the notes for this series. I am doing my very best to stay biblical and、uh, stay with what the Word says. Uh, my heart is never to offend, but I do believe this. I believe the Word of God, the cross, was designed to offend sin. I said it was designed to offend sin. It does not ever tolerate sin, it tolerates people, but not behavior. Amen. And the body of Christ has got to realize that the Bible does not teach fair. It does not teach fair. Somebody can get the same salary working from 8 to 5 as the one that started at 10 to 5. The Bible does not teach fair. There are some that receive five, three, and one. It's not fair. Fair is a word right out of the pit of hell. These words are used against the body of Christ. So get them out of your vocabulary. God desires and has built this nation on equal opportunity. But it hasn't always happened in every area. The desire was equal opportunity for all people. And it hasn't been that way. That's something that certainly should be corrected. But God, according to the Word of God, gives us all equal opportunity. He desires for us to be prosperous. He desires for us to be well, healthy. He desires for us to live in joy. He desires for us to live in peace. He desires for us to live in favor, highly favored, with God and with man. God designed this word for us. Not based on culture, not based on background, not based on education, not based on anything, but His people, whosoever. Will. Period. We need to get all the other trash out of our thinking. And as the word that Maureen just gave, I, it just came to me with that thought. God has prepared it for all of us. Now He's trying to prepare us. What are we choosing?、We've, in this series, we talked about. World order, the mark of Cain. It's going on yet today. It was, it's, it's biblical. It's from the beginning. It's going on now. World order. We've got to leave world order and go to Bible order. We've got to leave world reasoning and we've got to get back to Bible reasoning. Paul said, Come and let's reason together. There's, there's a spiritual effect that's available. He desires for us to grow in enlightenment, a gift that God's given to every one of mankind, that we might seek God, seek the kingdom of God first, His goodness, righteousness, and all of the things that we seem to spend so much of our lives seeking after will be added freely because we put it in order. Just because we put it in order. I don't know if you just got what I just said, but that's, I got something out of that if you didn't.、Amen. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and give you glory. Help us today as you teach your word and let it be a blessing to every heart. Well, thank you, Lord. I'll try to follow your leading, Lord, in everything that I say. Let it bring life to everyone that hears in Jesus' name.、Amen. There is no wisdom in this world. Only changeable facts. That's just the truth. In fact, there is no truth in this world save God's truth. 
Only God's, that's the only truth we have to hang on to is truth. That God, in fact, what did Jesus actually say in John 14, 6? How many times have you read this, heard this? But did you really think about it enough? In 14, 6, it says, I am. That's most important because God is I am. It also means he is. And he rewards those that diligently seek him. You must believe he is and that he rewards, not destroys, not takes away from, not limits, not tries to get you all to live at exactly the same level. He desires everyone to be wealthy. But we're not all going to have $12.76. Because that's socialism. Everybody has... It, 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 it's following after... World order follows after this thing called fair. It follows after this foolishness. I mean, we should have learned from history just listening to Hitler's one speech. Chicken in every pot, car in every garage. They were exactly the same car, exactly the same. And we've seen this sneaking up through our whole education system. We went from A, B, C, D, and F to satisfactory, unsatisfactory. Now we've gone to common core, which means that if you get a D, everybody needs to get a D. We don't want to make the D person feel bad. So if you play baseball in a game, everybody has the same score at the end. Now this is as dumb as a post. Because the cream can never rise to the top if you suppress the cream. If you homogenize society, there'll be no cream. Our education system, and I wrote my first book, Dr. Marina and I wrote our first book in 1973 with a Christian school that I started, K through 12. It actually taught character, Bible, truth. Still going today because its foundation is built on truth. But we promoted, and we one of, one of my students that sat under me actually developed the first computer trip chip for Ford. Because we educated. We did not intellectualize. In 1962, we changed that whole thing. We left IQ for SAT, which measures nothing more than what you can remember. And most of you can't remember what you ate yesterday. <laughs> IQ tested your ability to solve a problem in life is a problem that has to be solved. Okay, maybe I'm preaching. I'm not sure. But I want to get away from, and as Maureen shared, we've got to get away from world order and go to kingdom order. We've got to go to get away from world reason. We've got to get over to kingdom reason. We've got to, get, we've got to leave, leave, leave the world's words and get a hold of God's words. If we want to have life and life more abundant. It's the only way there. In fact, that's what it says in John 14, 6. It says this, I am the way. Somebody say the way. the way. Are you looking for the way? Here's the way. Right. Actually, it actually goes on and says there is no other way that God approves. This is the way. Jesus said, I am the way and anybody know? The truth. And he is the life you've been looking for. Just revelation of this one scripture change your whole life. I am the way, the truth, the life. You can't get to God except through Him.
You can't work hard enough. You can't be good enough. You can't do anything except through Christ Jesus. I'm dealing with that myself right now. You know, from the time I got born again, they gave me a school to build. Well, I don't know how to build no school. But the Spirit of God helped me build a school, K through 12. I wrote the curriculum for every day, for every teacher, for every subject, for every grade in a repetitious manner that would take them someplace to problem solving. That was an overwhelming task. But I built it around the first eight grades that I went through. Because when at this little country school that I went through with five in my class, I got an education. I don't think I learned anything in high school or college or graduate school that I didn't already know. Y'all quiet. I learned that the world was bigger and I learned about opportunities. Certainly that's all true. But I was educated. I'm not super intelligent. That's Jason and Scott and Maureen. That they're the ones that all the brains, but I, I got a good education. I write books, but I failed remedial writing in college twice. So I have to have editors and people that can spell. Oh, be quiet. You probably have the same problem. You don't have your computer, you can't add. <laughs> anyway we we're trying to get to discernment because I didn't really finish it up last week and I, I need to get to that subject but I just I, 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 I just it's, it's burning in my heart that we got to get the body of Christ back to the book we got to get the body of Christ back to the truth if we don't stand for something, we fall for everything. And it's time to stand up. It really is. We've got to stand against this foolishness that is permeating our schools and our system and our government and our... Who wants to be a police officer today? Who wants to try to defend the law, defend life? We're in serious straits, folks. Serious straits. God has called us by this book. He said this in one simple line. He said, I want you to live by what you don't see and stop living by what you do see. Stop living by what you hear, taste, smell, and touch. And start living by what the truth says about. You can see poverty and, and, and enjoy it. You don't, you don't even have to see it. It just comes natural. But you have to see what you don't have before you'll ever have it. He prepared the way. It's all done. All he's asked us to do is a simple thing called believe the book. Believe his word. You know what, the first big move in my life was to grow in faith. Well, you know, faith, you got to be careful with just faith because faith can become a law. You didn't have enough faith, that's why you died. God gave a measure of faith to everyone. We choose to believe it. He gives us free will to use what he gave us. And we don't use it, I don't know what to say. And I'm not completely healed myself because I'm not using faith like I should in all the areas of my life. Don't look at me religiously either. Because you've got the same problem. 
We're, grow, we're, we're growing in the use of what he gave us. We're growing in the ability to receive what's already ours. We're growing in the ability to see it so that we can receive it. We hear this teaching over and over, but does it settle in? Do we really apply it in every area of our life like God really wants us to so that we can live this life and life more abundant that he said to us? Listen to this line. That God gave me this one last week. If we don't follow the spirit of truth, we will... Live in the experience of the circumstances of the lie. If we don't follow the spirit of truth, well, just enjoy the circumstance of the lie. You need to let that settle in your heart. Because that's what we're experiencing right now. The circumstance of the lie. Okay, that didn't go well. I thought maybe it would. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, and it's one that I quoted, and that is, is that we have to live by, we have to live by what we don't see because that's eternal. Do you get the idea that it, it lasts forever? But if you live by what you see, it's only temporary. It's the difference between investment and spending, if you think about it. You spend, it pays no dividends, and you have temporary experience with your TV, your new big screen. But you took that $1,000 and invested it in the kingdom and in the earth, you might have $100,000. Now you can buy your TV with cash and have some money. No, oh, come on. <laughs> See, this, I'm, I'm, where I'm taking you is discernment. Are you discerning good and evil? It's a special gift that he gave to us that we could discern what is right and what is wrong. We could actually use that discernment to use it for proper use of resource, which is connected again to the wisdom of God. And we could discern whether that food is good for me or not. You have free will, so you know it. Still deal with sugar and chocolate and stuff, but I pay the price for that. Amen. But we should be able to discern every area. If we discern food properly, we probably would not be sick. If we discerned what we bought and what we sold, we may not be poor. If we discerned what we invested in, if we discerned who we married, I'm really messing with stuff now. If we use some discernment before we make these major decisions in life, how much pain could it save for children, for generations to come? A gift that he gave us called discernment. I love the story. I got to get this in. So, so Dr. Maureen and I, this is many, many years ago, I just got back into full-time ministry when I came out here. Um, I was making about 40 grand a year back in, in the 80s or late 70s and with the union. And the church asked me if I would come to work for them because my youth group was bigger than the church. We're operating out of our home. And so they hired me as a youth pastor for 13000 a year. Maureen's told a story. I just, we walked away from the table after they made me the offer, and she said, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to serve God. We'll figure the out, money out later. 
So if you think I'm in the ministry for money, you haven't got a clue. I'm in the ministry for building the kingdom of God. In fact, we're just dealing with this right now because I spent my whole life building the kingdom of God. And it's just as recently God came to us in our prayer time and said, what are your desires? We both looked at each other. We don't have any. So we've been trying to figure out what our desires are. I said, Lord, your desires are our desires. I, that's what we've been doing. I don't know. But I'm blessed. So early on, as I might take this job as a youth pastor, we now suddenly have less income than we have outgo. Anybody home? You've never been there, right? Okay, so you're just smarter than I am, that's all. So, so I, I said, well, we're going to have to do what we used to do back in Wisconsin. Maybe I can buy and sell some cars. And so that's exactly what we started to do. I had a contact, Jerry Ben Gundy. He ran the auto auction at Elma School in Maine. So Maureen and I'd take our credit reserve oh, yeah. <laughs> and we would go down to the auction and practice discernment. <laughs> now discernment's opposite of it looks good, smells good, drives good. <laughs> okay. It's senseless. And so we'd go down to the auto auction and sit in the stands. And uh, initially, I wanted to go start them up out on the field and look at them and check them out and look for leaks, and oil leaks, and check the tires. But we decided that's not, we're going to trust God. Now, we had a hot... I, we had 99 and 99 one hundredths success. We did have one car <laughs> that we bought because it looked good, smelled good, sounded good. <laughs> On our way to an Oral Roberts meeting, we blew a rod through the side of the block. <laughs> right? Oh, it was Robin's egg blue with a velour interior. Oh, my God. <laughs> And your natural man just rose up and said, I want that car. And it overrode the spirit. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest with you. And I spent the next three months finding an engine changing gas. It was a diesel, so I had to change gas. Every drivetrain, everything had to be changed. In it, and we broke even. Thank you, Lord. But we would pray over the cars. And some of them, they pushed, pulled drug in. And the auctioneers start out, well, only with three dollars. And so we had our little car. And God said, buy that. I'm going, no. <laughs> okay. Boom. 150 bucks. Bought it. I'm going, oh. Okay, Lord. These cars that we... I bought one car. <laughs> it's a 57 or 67. It was a 67 Chevy. 67 Chevy, I think it was. And uh, I bought it for 175 bucks at the auction. And it ran pretty good. It had a little knock on the engine. Took care of that. But anyway, drove it home. Opened the trunk up to check to see if there was a spare tire and stuff. It was chock full of stereo systems, brand new in boxes. Now, what do you do? This obviously is probably stolen equipment. Can I take it back to the auction and say,
You're messed up whether you do or you don't. <laughs> so I kept them. And I had stereo systems to put in every car from then on. I mean, yeah. because there's nothing else I could do with it. I would be accused in a heartbeat for just possession. You all follow that. But we bought cars by discernment. And we made tons of money. I was making $30,000 a year selling car on top of what? We were blessed, blessed, blessed because we started to learn how to discern what to buy and what not to buy. Amen. And it produced proper use of resource. Discernment is greatest gift to me out of all five of the things we're talking about. It is so critical. It's a, it's a gift that's way above the world. They don't have it. They have something called intuition. But they don't have discernment. And it can lead you to the best life, a prosperous life, a blessed life, a healthy life, a good life. And I'm out of time. But discernment. If you're not operating in it, start practicing it. Start trusting God that you're hearing his voice. Follow, if you can't follow anything else, follow peace about something. Because discernment's connected to peace. Discernment is connected to health. Discernment is connected to wealth. It's connected to joy. It's I said it this way to many people. Well, I'll let you end with this. I'll, I'll let you just think about this. If you wonder if it's right or wrong, it is always wrong. Because there's a difference between knowledge and knowing. Knowledge just puffs you up. But knowing is peace in your heart. I know this is right. I know this is what God said. See, all are using discernment. But occasionally you slip. Because when you, you wake up in the morning with that sore throat, and you say, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. That was the discerning of the Holy Spirit that just led you to say the word. Instead, your natural mind would have said, I, have, I am sick, I have a sore throat. That's operating in the natural, in what you see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. But if your answer to that is, by his stripes I'm healed, no, I'm not going to have no sore throat, no, I'm not going to have that, no, that's... And by breakfast time, it's gone. Because he chose the invisible. So don't tell me you don't hear from the Holy Spirit, because you do. He, he will always lead you to the Word. He will not lead you to Iceland unless it's God's plan. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to make a point out of that. I'm not sure if it got across or not. But remember, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You didn't, you didn't hear the last part of it? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Why is that in the scriptures? Hebrews chapter 4 says... That we, God has given us this ability, but he, he said the word of God is sharper than a two, any two-edged sword, able to separate joint and marrow, spirit and soul. Discernment is your edge that separates the soul's See, hear, taste, touch, and smell from the Word of God and the life abundant. 
That's what it's for. And the Holy Spirit is the only one that leads you to what Jesus said. And Jesus only said what he heard his father say. Therefore, what God said is the truth, and it has the power to produce in your life. It is. Truth is the power of God. Why is there such a battle against the truth? Amen? Well, I'm, gonna, I, I'm out of time, but I, I don't know if I covered discernment enough. We're going to go to preceding next week, and that's heavy duty as well. See, we, we, we have to be careful with, and I guess, okay. We have to be careful with interpreting the Word of God instead of reading it based on God's intent. That's the problem we're having with our Constitution. We're interpreting what the Father said instead of reading for intent. They said, give us life, liberty, in the pursuit of happiness. Amen. That's that's what that's, but that's that's Bible. God gives us life, liberty, in the pursuit of happiness. That's what the whole book's about. And so you cannot have socialism and liberty. Because when you put everyone on the same level, there's no liberty to rise or to fall. You can't have both. You can have equal opportunity, which is what we need. then you can have liberty. But if everybody has the same, liberty can't survive. Freedom can't survive. <coughs> Something for you to think about. I'll quit. <laughs>